I want to start off by telling you guys a story. My daughter walked into my room a few days ago, and uh, it was early for for us at least, about seven o'clock in the morning, and uh, it was on our day off. And she was livid, like absolutely mad. And I thought, what on earth could you be mad at at seven o'clock in the morning, other than waking up and that kind of thing? Um, but I was like, baby girl, what what's going on? Why are you why are you so upset? And she said, the Encanto family doesn't follow God. And I had no idea where that came from. I don't know if you have watched the Disney film Encanto, but uh, I said, what do you mean? Like, how, like, how do you know? And she said, I had a dream last night and the Encanto family invited me to join their family. And I asked them, do you follow God? And they said, no, we believe a candle is our God. <laughs> and uh, she was so upset about this. She went on with the dream trying to persuade them to follow God while they kept saying that they followed a candle as their God. And she had to decline the invitation <laughs> to join the Encanto family. And she was so genuinely upset. But it was a really cool insight into the investment that we've made in Kaya so far in carrying on a spiritual conversation with her. She really deeply cares about following God and making sure that other people are following God. And it, it brought into my mind some kind of reflection questions of what it means to not only be discipled, but also to disciple others. And a story inside of scripture stood out to me, particularly a, a relationship stood out to me in scripture. And it's the one of Paul and Timothy. And I want to read a section of scripture for you. It's out of 2 Timothy 1, uh, 5, and it says this, I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I know that same faith continues strong in you. Now, Paul's story with Timothy is pretty interesting because what some scholars believe is that Paul was actually a citizen of Rome through his father, who would have been a Roman citizen, and his mother being Jewish would have passed on the, the Jewish faith to him. And so he had a, a father that was Roman, a mother that was Jewish. And what we know from, from Timothy is that when Paul met Timothy in Lystra, that he was actually a, a, a well thought of person that was there, but his father was Greek and his mother was Jewish. And so he sees something in Timothy that they have kind of in common, having mixed parents potentially. And uh, he decides, I want to take Timothy underneath my wing. I want to intentionally disciple Timothy. And you can read Paul's letters to Timothy yourself and just see the, the incredible love that Paul has for him. But that's not where Timothy's faith story started. It actually started with his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice investing inside of uh, Timothy's life. I think that has a takeaway for us as the, the people of God. Some of us are in families where we still have children inside of our household. Some of us are in families where we have grandchildren, maybe not in our house, but uh, that maybe live nearby or live in a different country. And if you think back to a testimony that you heard even on Sunday, one of our teen girls in our youth group was being discipled by her aunt over Zoom, long distance. Some pretty cool situations there. And I started thinking back into my own life, who was it that really took me under their wing? Who was it that discipled me? And of course, I thought about my youth pastor and the the impact that he made on my life in my foundational years, uh, the questions that I could go to him with and all those things. But there was really someone before that that invested in my life uh, at a ground level foundation building, and that was my grandma. Uh, my grandma's name was Nellie Collins, and Nellie went to a super, super, super small Baptist church. But I can even remember uh, times at my grandma's house and my grandma had a couple different skills that she could do but one that stood out to me in particular was she could take a paring knife and a red delicious apple and she could peel the whole thing in one giant long peel and i remember she would sit in her rocking chair and she would pick up her bible and this is her bible right here she would pick up her bible and she would read her bible and peel 
a red delicious apple. And sometimes she'd invite us over for that. And sometimes we would just watch her as she was going through, um, through her own devotions. And uh, this is one of my most prized possessions because when my grandma passed away of liver cancer, um, this was passed on to me. And it's so cool to be able to go through her Bible and see all the marks and the notations and the underlines that stood out to her. And, and I thought, man, my faith didn't get deep while my grandma was still alive, but the actions and the attitude and the, the presence of peace and the love of God is something that she passed on to me and she didn't even really know it while she was still alive. And I think as the people of God and, and all being a part of the body of Christ, what should stand out to us is that we are fulfilling our responsibility to disciple the next generation. And maybe you're in a situation where you have children inside of your household and you can be intentional and carry forward those conversations. Maybe you're the grandmother of a child or the grandfather of a child. Maybe you're the aunt or the uncle. Maybe you don't have any kin that are, that are nearby you or that you can relate to, but you can be someone who is like a grandfather or like a grandmother in someone else's life. In fact, as we look at statistics, there's a book that's out there that's called Sticky Faith. Um, inside of Sticky Faith, we learn through just pure statistics that it takes multiple people making connections with our children and our teenagers in order for that, that faith to stick beyond graduating high school. Um, and really what they're looking at is four, five, six people that someone could look back to and go, these are the people that invested in me as a young person. And so what I want you to do is I want you to, to think through and I want you to reflect who are the people that played an integral part of your faith story, your faith journey? What are their names? What did they do in your life that made such a big difference or maybe a little difference that was a stepping stone in your, in your faith? And then I want you to ask a little bit of a harder question. And that is, who are you currently part of, their, of the faith journey for? Right? What faith journey are you currently a part of for somebody else? What are you doing? Have you intentionally decided, hey, there's a, there's a young person that I wanna take underneath my wing and maybe I'm not related to them, maybe I am related to them, but I wanna, I wanna intentionally be there for that person in whatever way I can. Maybe you know how to uh, do woodworking or maybe you're really good at fishing or hunting or something like that. And you could reach out and find a connection point with a young person inside of our church and say, man, I wanna look at what it looks like to, to be a mentor. But really the focus of this is this idea of discipleship, the connections, the relationships that you've made in your life and that you can look to make in your life. And so give that a thought, talk about it in your small group, and uh, thanks for joining me today.